People fight about the craziest things. People fight about who's the best TV dad. People fight about what color that dress was. People will fight about anything and everything. The power of the internet brings a lot of attention to those fights, and one of the craziest fights going on right now is about a fairy tale. The following is a world-class bullshit is exclusive. Snow White is the next in the never-ending cycle of live-action remakes of classic animated films. The live-action remake of Disney's first animated feature is already marred by controversy. The classic tale of good, evil, and true love is getting the modern Disney treatment, and people are very upset. Stick with me for just a moment, and I'll give a little context for the new people and back. But before I get to that and everything else, today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my graphic novel, Stealing Solo. Stealing Solo asks the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? That, and a whole lot more, is answered in Stealing Solo, a Captain's parody. Stealing Solo has been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs, and it's available now for a limited time only. Go to StealingSolo.com, which is powered by Shopify, so you get the reward-winning safety and security, and get yourselves a copy today. Once we sell through this limited backstock, I'm going back to the drawing board to bring you the sequel which parodies Luke Skywalker's Fall from Grace, and finally the closing chapter, which I can't wait to get to, Frankenfisher, the Bride of Solo. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. So folks, the only way to get that is go to StealingSolo.com right now, get yourselves a copy, and enjoy the greatest Star Wars parodies in Spaceballs. Rachel Ziegler, the actress who's playing Snow White in the upcoming live-action remake, gave an interview to Extra TV at the 2022 D23 Expo. In the interview, she notes that Snow White's familiar story would be reimagined for today's more progressive time. However, it's not much of what Ziegler said as but how she said it and who appeared to have ruffled feathers. By way of trying to explain the film's progressive makeover, Ziegler criticized the original for very evidently being a product of the 1930s. There's a big focus on the love story with a guy who literally stalks her, she says, calling that dynamic weird in a sing-song, similarly sarcastic voice. Her version, Zegler said, is not really about a love story at all. It's a change she deems wonderful. Instead, it's about Snow White's inner journey to find her true self. In another resurfaced interview from last year, this time with Entertainment Weekly, Zegler reveals that as a child she was scared of the animated movie that she watched for the first time in more than a decade while prepping for her role. She also notes that in this interview that the original film is extremely dated regarding the ideas of women being in roles of power and what a woman is fit for in the world. In this new version, she says, the film's most famous phrase, the fairest of them all, will refer to the most just as opposed to the most beautiful. Now here's where the controversy comes from. There seems to be a few common reasons why fans are upset about this. First off, it's messing with a staple of their childhood. Others believe that Zegler's read of the nearly century-old animated film is wrong. They don't regard the prince as a stalker, and they see the film as not one that portrays a prince obsessed with a princess, but rather one that centers on Snow White's relationship with her friends, the dwarves. Others don't see a problem with focusing the story on true love, sharing a version of the same rebuttal, aren't women allowed to want love? When did that become so bad? And of course, the staunchest Snow White fans aren't jazzed about the idea of someone who wasn't a huge fan of the original leading the remake. So that's the story so far. Of course, things will get worse for this film as it goes on, but we're almost a year out. But let's take a deeper look at all of this, because this isn't really a story about bigots on the internet. It's a story about how I met your mother. I mean, it's a story about how Snow White and storytelling is part of the fabric of who we are. The fight about Snow White isn't about left versus right. It's a fight about tradition, and traditions matter. Traditions make us who we are, and when someone tries to change us by force, the result is usually disastrous. That's what the fight over Snow White is. It's not really about conservative values or old school ways, but people will equate traditions with them, and I think that's wrong. The internet perpetuates the left-right dichotomy, but there are a lot of people in the middle who don't like the stupid shit, and excuse my bluntness, but this is all stupid shit. It's maddening that people in Hollywood make these movies as an attempt to modernize and stick it to Republicans or the right because of some misplaced anger from their past. Are they angry over an election? Are they mad because they didn't get a job? Do they feel some sort of anger towards the opposite sex? If this is their revenge, what a pitiful revenge it is. Updating Snow White isn't some noble cause. It's using something beloved as a platform for their personal politics. These people come off as petulant children with a job. That's why there is a small but growing number of people who oppose any positive change of the writer's strike. In a way, writers like this have put themselves in this position. No, they didn't create the working conditions they're fighting to change, but they do have half the country that dislikes them because they have turned entertainment into their own political platform and producers are guilty for allowing it. D23 
Do you really need these egotistical dolts who think they're smarter than they actually are messing with our traditions? That's the whole point of all of this. People don't dislike the new Snow White because they're racist, ableist, bigoted, or any other buzzword that lost its efficacy five years ago. People don't like their traditions changed because they're their traditions. It's like pizza on Thanksgiving or a Super Bowl without beer. Why mess with something that has become a beloved tradition? It's a destructive action that's tearing people apart, and it goes deeper than just a movie. Let's go back a few years to the whole Star Wars sequel trilogy debacle. And that wasn't about angry white fans hating women and minorities, it was about watching their childhood heroes pimped out to build up lesser characters. If the characters were all white guys, the same things would be said. People hate to see their good memories tainted in a bad way. That's what happens in real life, through the passage of time, but it doesn't have to happen in entertainment. Entertainment is a fantasy. It's no more fantastical to see your favorite heroes have a happily ever after or find true love than it is to have lightsabers, time traveling cars, talking raccoons, or a 95 pound woman who can toss a 275 pound man. Star Wars is a fairy tale and it's meant to make us happy. Snow White is literally a fairy tale. People use fairy tales to pass down values, beliefs, and cautionary tales among many other things, but at their core, they are much more. Fairy tales show children how to handle problems. We learn from these characters in the stories, even as adults. They help us because we connect them to our lives, our dreams, our anxieties, and consider what we would do in their shoes. Fairy tales help children learn how to navigate life. When you have mean-spirited, politically motivated people whose main goal is to tear down traditions, what value are we teaching the next generation? The people in charge of telling these tales that are supposed to help others navigate through life can't even navigate their way through a drive through The absurdity of all of this is the people who refuse to see these things. They play these concerns off as unimportant or conspiratorial, but they are valid concerns. Entertainment is the universal language that brings us together. These stories are supposed to transcend barriers and bring us closer. These modern reimaginings are divisive. They have people fighting with each other, instead of learning what makes us similar. They had this shit right in the 90s. Every movie was about unity. So much in fact that Rick James and Queen Latifah must have been very pleased. Look at Independence Day. The cynical side of the internet would paint that film as a cheesy 90s sci-fi flick. And while it's from the 90s, it's got a great message about unity. Of course, it takes an external intergalactic threat to make humanity respect one another, but that's not too far off from the truth. After the tragic events of 9-11, the U.S. saw a level of unity I had not seen before or since. That tragic event helped everyone in this country see past our petty bullshit and realize we're all in this together. While I hope to never have such a tragedy happen again, the aftermath was oddly unified. It was a very unique time to be alive. Who is anyone to judge what another person holds valuable? It's incredibly important to the individual. It's the flip side to this obsession with identity and the politics that follow them. These people are very quick to shoot down anything that goes against whatever extreme trends they're obsessed with. People are supposed to bend over backwards to cater to their feelings, but where's the reciprocity? Where is the line drawn? Why do our institutions have to fall because they feel it's about time? It's about time is one of the worst phrases that gets parroted on the internet. It's constantly used to justify stupid changes for the sake of change. It's about time these people get an ass whooping. They want to destroy anything traditional for the sake of destroying it and play the victim once people push back. When will they act with the level of maturity and understanding that they demand for their views? If they want equality, they'd sit down and listen to everyone else. Disney of all people should understand the value of tradition. They're a company who uses their traditions for monetary gain. They cash in on traditions constantly. Everything they've created was a tradition that they took and carried on. To take their first animated film and bastardize it in their 100th year is maddening. They truly do not value traditions that made them a household name. This film, Snow White and whatever you're going to call it, will not be successful. It's already dead thanks to the actors and the sentiment surrounding this film. People do not like their traditions messed with. Snow White may have been Disney's first animated feature, and the live-action remake may signal the end for the studio. That would be truly poetic, much like a fairy tale. So folks, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Instead of rushing to get a story out, I'm going to make sure we have the best take here on YouTube. So if you want the best takes here on YouTube like this one right here, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let us know you enjoy quality, world-class entertainment. On your way out, check out one of our other videos from the channel if you want some more world-class quality content. But if you're in the mood for something physical, well, go over to StealingSolo.com and get the graphic novel that I both wrote and drew. It answers the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? 
That question and a whole lot more is answered in Stealing Solo, a captain's parody. It's only available for a limited time. The website's run by Shopify, so you get their award-winning safety and security. And folks, it's been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the best Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about this whole Snow White debacle. Obviously, you're not interested in watching the film, but you have to care about traditions because they're what make us who we are. And at the end of the day, they bring us together. And I don't like divisive entertainment. You don't, no one does, except the small cadre of people that control all of our entertainment. So folks, thank you for watching. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no, they're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff. So if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of World Class Bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.